Ladies and gentlemen, here discussing with the playbook. And today I wanna to talk about parents spending time at your child's practice. And I'm actually gonna start with a personal experience. So this is something my dad said, and the comment he made was essentially along the lines of, if you as a parent want your child coming to you for the rest of your life, looking for help, looking for you to solve their problems, then continue to monitor and manage everything that they're doing. If, on the other hand, you want to develop someone that is self-sufficient, independent, and a problem solver, then you need to let them go out and manage their own experience, manage their own environment. And that's the way that you help develop self-sufficient people for long-term success. Now, as a parent, you need to make whatever choice you want. I'm trying to give you the perspective of what I see as a guy that does the day-to-day, -day, the experience that I have personally, um, as somebody that went through the system already, and as well as a coach currently that works with players under my own organization. So this is something I see within my own organization, and I think you're gonna find this interesting. So I always tell parents like, look, if you wanna watch practice, fine, but do so with a good distance away from the actual training. Because if you're sitting too close, what's gonna happen a lot of times is, anytime the player makes a mistake, they're gonna be looking to you immediately afterwards. So let's say I have the ball, make a mistake, they're gonna look over or I would look over at my parent to see if they're paying attention to me. And that's not a good process for a player in development. They don't want to be feeling the pressure of mom and dad because they made a mistake. And I think we can both agree, we make hundreds of mistakes every single day. So what I've noticed is it's great for players to have the freedom to express themselves and this helps them develop without the pressure of mom and dad, one, giving input constantly over their shoulder and two, just giving them the freedom to be able to express themselves, make their decisions, build that relationship with their teammates and the coach or coaches. And the only way they can do that is if mom and dad aren't constantly surveilling everything about their practice. They're, they're given the freedom, they can express themselves and they can just provide feedback. And I think it will actually help your guys' relationship in the long term. And here's why. Because if you're not constantly watching their practice, then you guys can actually have a conversation where you're building and managing how they react to you. So what does that mean? What I'm trying to tell you is, if you're not sitting there watching the entire practice, you don't know what happened. So if, for example, if I have a son playing and I'm not watching the practice and it was an hour and a half, I don't know what they did. So I would have to ask, hey, how was your practice? And if he says, good, I'm assuming it's a boy, then I'd be like, okay, well, what was good about it? What did you guys do? What was practice? What was the warm up? What was the second thing you guys did? How about the third thing? And you're just trying to provide the opportunity for them to bring you details so that way they can also start building sentence structure and they can start building the other side of their life. Because as well, if they become a professional one day, and even in college, you're gonna be doing interviews. Well, mom and dad can't manage that for you. You're an adult. And that's something that I think is undervalued in this country, again, is building that self-independent person. Because if we look at the best players in the world, they're pretty self-sufficient. They don't have to answer questions to mom and dad, or mom and dad don't have to answer the questions for them, I should say. And it's a constant revolving door. And I think we have a big issue in this country of overprotection. So this is one way that you can try to uh, avoid that and let them develop that self-efficiency to solve their own problems on the field. Because, and I've even seen this as well, when, when there's a bit of a fight between two kids. And of course, as a parent, you wanna protect your, your child, which I, I can understand, no problem. But like, they also have to solve that problem between the two players and also the coach. But if immediately a fight happens, and I'm not saying actually like a fist fight, but I'm just saying like a disagreement between kids, then parents come and jump in then we didn't solve the problem internally. We now have external factors coming in and trying to put their perspective on it. Well, what's gonna happen when they get to 15 years old and they get into an actual fight and they don't know how to manage that? I, I hope you kind of see the point that I'm trying to bring. So it's very, very, very important. My perspective, let the player develop themselves self-efficiently. Again, you can be at practice, but stay further away so you can't directly manage and watch what your child's doing. Because I've even seen this where during practice, like during a water break, the parent will come up to their child and then start engaging in conversation about things that they should be doing or should be improving. And again, that's not a productive environment. Their time is to be with their teammates 
and the coach. So from that perspective, keep that in the back of your mind. Keep running it. And hopefully you take the advice. You might not agree with it. That's okay. I'm just trying to give you my perspective. Thank you.